So here we are yet again. Uh, this time we're looking at evaluating and verifying. Now, traditionally, this section is the one that students, you know, it's the night before they've done their solution, they've done everything else, and they just bash away at the keyboard and get a few hundred words on there for evaluate and verify. Big mistake. This section here is worth five out of the 20 marks. It's worth almost as much as this section here, which is kind of worth about seven-ish marks. Um, so you should be putting almost as much work into this section as you are into this, this section, I, I think. So let's figure out how we can achieve that. So we're at evaluating and verifying, that's what we're calling this section, and this is where we're really trying to hit this part of the ISMG. Evaluate the reasonableness of solution by considering the results, assumptions, and observations. As a maths teacher, I often think about this as three dot points. Reasonableness of solution by considering the results, reasonableness of solution by considering the assumptions, and reasonableness of solutions by considering the observations. And you really need to hit all three of those. Now, good news, if you were following a lot of my recommendations in the solve section, then you've probably already been doing some evaluation of your solutions. Watch my previous video on this, you'll see that I evaluated my solution within my solve section. This is evaluating my solution by considering my result of five kilometers there. That doesn't mean that we get to just leave this section blank. What we're trying to do is create a bomb-proof PSMT here that when we send it away to the QCAA, they go, yeah, of course, this is 20 out of 20. Look at all this great stuff they've done in Evaluate and Verify. Of course, the QCAA have their say in the Methods Subject Report from 2022. Um, I think this part of the dot point is important, and it's something I said just a, a second ago. Responses need to demonstrate that the results, assumptions, and observations have been considered to appraise and justify the solutions. So you have to consider all three. Um, the second dot point, something important. The evaluation could include the use of technology to verify solutions or the use of both mathematical and everyday language to justify solutions. So one way that we can evaluate and verify our solutions is to find a second way to calculate it. So for instance, if you were using a bunch of algebra to do a bunch of definite integrals, a way to evaluate the reasonableness of your solution by considering your results would be to use technology to come to that answer in another way. Uh, you could also say, estimate the area under the curve using the rectangle sum. So now you've used definite integrals, you've used the rectangle sum, you've calculated in two different ways. The second way you did it was evaluating the reasonableness of your solution by considering your results. Dangerous, repeat myself, but this is what I'm talking about. Use technology and an alternative method to verify your solution. You could also calculate error against real world data. So let's say you were trying to predict the population of a country after a certain number of years. Well, people have already been doing that. If you did a quick Google search, you could find somewhere where they would predicted that um, population and you could compare your prediction to their prediction and see if they line up. You're evaluating the reasonableness of your solution by considering your results. Now, you also need to do assumptions and observations, and we're gonna jump into the QCAA's exemplar from one of the students last year to see what this looks like in practice. You can see this exemplar's massive. I've also put my two cents in over here. So, what's happening? Don't worry if you can't read the actual text at the moment. We'll zoom in in a minute. This first part here is some maths. In your evaluate and verify section, if you're not doing some maths, I think you're doing it wrong. You wanna do some maths in here. If it's just a block of text, I just don't think you're doing the right thing. You need to be coming up with some other way to calculate or some mathematical way to compare, something like that. So that's what's happening here. Now, this next paragraph interprets that maths and talks about whether the results um, are reasonable or not. They're evaluating the reasonableness of their solution by considering their results. Now, this paragraph and this paragraph are evaluating the reasonableness of the solution by considering the assumptions. 
So they went right back up to the top of their assignment, they looked at the assumptions they made, and they've evaluated the reasonableness of the solution by talking about those assumptions. And then these last two paragraphs are evaluations of the reasonableness of the solution by considering the observations made. Again, went straight up to the top, looked at some observations, brought them down here, and evaluated the reasonableness of the solution by considering them. Okay, uh, if we zoom in, okay, if you can't see these words, if your internet is not working great, download this document from the comments so you can read along. Um, but what I want to draw your attention to here are the numbers. This paragraph here is where they're evaluating the reasonableness of their solution by considering their results. They're talking about a 9.15% error. They're quantifying their evaluation. That's important. I would want to see some numbers here when you're considering the reasonableness of your solution, especially when talking about your results. All right, if we scroll down a little bit, this paragraph here and this paragraph here are talking about their assumptions. Um, Leslie matrices are one of the best methods for predicting population change among a certain population. Firstly, it was observed the model did not account for immigration and emigration. It was therefore assumed this did not impact the population in any way. All right, so that was the assumption they made. However, this is an unreasonable assumption to make as emigration and immigration are inevitable in countries such as Japan and would influence their populations, hence decreasing the reasonableness of the model. Okay, so they've looked at their assumption. We assume there's no immigration and immigration. They've said, well, that's unreasonable because countries do have immigration and immigration and that has decreased the reasonableness of the model. Perfect. Assumption, how, how good is that assumption? Has it increased or decreased the model? Uh, and so you can read the same in this paragraph here where they talk about birth and survival rates not changing. And again, that's not a great um, assumption. So it's reducing the reasonableness of the model. And then they've talked about their observations and how they've affected the reasonableness of the model. Um, if you are going to do well here when it comes to um, evaluating the reasonableness of your solution, then you're going to have to do all three of those things. This exemplar is a gift. Thank you so much, the QCAA, because it shows you absolutely everything. It shows you do some maths, talk about how reasonable it is by considering your results, talk about how reasonable it is by considering your assumptions, and talk about how reasonable it is by considering your observations. Okay, not far to go now.